let's transition and let's talk some basketball and let's talk about the NBA in season tournament as the Indiana Pacers beat the Milwaukee Bucks 128 to 119 for the Pacers. Tyrese Hallenburton is playing some great basketball. He had 27 points, shot 11 of 19 from the floor, 15 assists for the Bucks. Giannis, he finished with 37 points, shot 13 of 19 from the floor. He had 10 rebounds. So, my biggest takeaway from the Pacers 128 to 119 upset win over the Milwaukee Bucks is Tyrese Hallenburton is a up and coming superstar in this league, and he is playing some great basketball. I look at this young man who had 27 points last night, but it wasn't his points that I was the most impressed with. I was most impressed with his ability to pass the basketball in his court vision. I mean, Hallen Bird is getting players in this Pacers offense open shots because of his ability to create off the dribble and create opportunities not only for himself but for his teammates. Like the Pacers last night had multiple, multiple open looks because of Hallen Burton's ability to get into the paint per se and create open shots on the perimeter for shooters on this team like Bruce Brown, like Aaron Naismith, okay, like Miles Turner, who can also hit the three as a big as well. So Hallen Burton is an up-and-coming superstar in this league. His court vision is like none other. And having 15 assists last night was impressive. But honestly, what impressed me the most was he didn't even have any turnovers. You, you know, usually when players are creators and they're trying to create for their teams, Usually, you have three or four turnovers just based on tr trying to create opportunities for others to score the basketball. Last night, Hallen Burton didn't have one single turnover. So, not only did he impress me with his court vision, he impressed me with his ability to protect the basketball. Not one turnover going up against a team in the Milwaukee Bucks who have – Great defenders like Giannis, like Brooke Lopez, okay? Now, we know as a defensive unit, the Milwaukee Bucks, they leave a lot to be desired. They're not great defensively, and I'm going to talk about them here shortly, but Hallen Burton did a great job at creating opportunities for his teammates and did a tremendous job at protecting the basketball. And I look at this Indiana Pacers team. They're 12-8. and eight. They're 6 right now in the Eastern Conference, and in their path – to get to the finals in the in-season tournament, they beat the two heavyweights in the Eastern Conference, in the Boston Celtics and in the Milwaukee Bucks. Very, 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 very great, great performance from this Pacers basketball team. Rick Carlisle was doing a tremendous job coaching this basketball team. He allows them to run. They run a lot. I watched that game yesterday, start to finish, and they run. They get the basketball, and they have – Allen Burton pushed the pace, and they, they, they really run a lot, and they, try, they force you to have to get back in transition. They really, really do. They had 11 fast break points, which isn't a lot, but, you know, they forced the Bucks to have to get back last night and defend. But for the game, the Pacers had 30 assists. Allen Burton had 15 of those 30 assists, but they shared the basketball, and the way that this team is playing right now, they're playing some great basketball. They really, really are. Miles Turner last night, 26 points, 10 rebounds. Okay? They had a great, great pickup trading for Obi Toppin. Last night, Obi Toppin, 14 points, 6 of 8 shooting from the floor. Okay? We know he's a, a Skywalker who can hit 
shots, but also he's great at being able to run in transition and catch alley-oops. And so the, Rick Carlisle has this Indiana Pacers, who's a young basketball team playing some tremendous basketball. And the way that they were able to knock off the Boston Celtics, remember in this matchup against the Celtics on Monday, they were down at the half. They were down at the half, and they came back, and they outplayed the Celtics in the second half. And then in this matchup, they were up at halftime against the Bucs, but in the third quarter, Damian Lillard came out. He was on fire, and the Pacers, despite the Bucs making a strong, strong run in the third quarter and taking the lead, the Pacers showed mental toughness because they stuck with the game and they were able to pull out the game in the fourth quarter. But I think the biggest reason why the Pacers beat the Bucs was because Tyrese Hallenburton outplayed Damian Lillard. But it's not all Damian Lillard's fault, which leads me to the Milwaukee Bucks. When I watch the Milwaukee Bucks, there's no flow or no organization in their offense. And I have to call out first-year head coach, Adrian Griffin, because the Bucks they fired Mike Budenholzer after the Bucks had a early first round exit. They lost to the Miami Heat, a Miami Heat team that were the underdogs going into that series against the Milwaukee Bucks. They fired Mike Budenholzer after that. And remember, Mike Budenholzer won an NBA championship for the Milwaukee Bucks a few years ago. So they fire Mike Budenholzer, and they bring in Adrian Griffin. And before the season started, one of the assistants on this Bucks coaching staff was Terry Stotts. Remember, Terry Stotts coached Damian Lillard in Portland, and Damian Lillard and Terry Stotts had a great relationship. So one of the one, what happened was Adrian Griffin and Terry Stotts, they got into a heated argument. Something happened at one of the Bucks practices, and Terry Stotts resigned. He, he resigned, and we didn't really know or understand why Terry Stotts randomly resigned. And now I think things are starting to come out, and people are questioning Adrian Griffin's ability to coach. Last night, I got a notification from Bleacher Report about how Bobby Portis called Adrian Griffin out about what's going on with this Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. And I understand the Bucks are 15 and 7 and second right now in the Eastern Conference, but they have to get better offensively. They have to get better. I think I saw something earlier this morning where Damian Lillard and Giannis, they are not even top 10 in the NBA as far as a duo who run plays together and does pick and rolls and stuff. Damian Lillard runs more plays with Brooke Lopez than he does with Giannis. And that's a problem. That's a problem. And um, I'm looking at this Bucks team right now. They got to figure some things out because Damian Lillard and Giannis are your one and your two. And Middleton is your clear number three on this basketball team. But in late game situations, for some reason, Chris Middleton has the basketball, and Damian Lillard is just standing in the corner, and that is an issue for me because we know that Damian Lillard is the most clutch player in the NBA. He is a big-time shot maker, and he is the most clutch player in the NBA. There's no player in the NBA who's better in clutch moments than Damian Lillard. I thought Kyrie in that conversation as well, but Damian Lillard is big time. And we know that under five minutes in a close game in the fourth quarter, it's Dame time. But we haven't been able to see Dame time many times this year because in the fourth quarter, in closing moments, they're going to Chris Middleton and not Damian Lillard. Now, I know Chris Middleton, he was the closer for the Bucs when they won their championship against the Suns a few years ago because as great as Giannis was and even though he was the Bucks' best player Giannis was never the closer for the Milwaukee Bucks it was always and always has been Chris Middleton 
But Damian Lillard is better than Chris Middleton, and he's a better closer than Chris Middleton. I think A.J. Griffin needs to seriously consider, seriously consider, and you guys may laugh at me about this, they need to consider bringing Chris Middleton off the bench. I think he'll be a tremendous six-man on this Bucks basketball team, and you can have the offense run through Dame and Giannis for the starting unit. But this Bucks team has to get better. They got to get better. They're not playing great defense. And offensively, there's no flow or rhythm to their offense. There's no flow or rhythm. Now, let's transition and let's talk about the Pelicans-Lakers game as the Lakers beat the Pelicans 133-83 to for the Pelicans. Zion Williamson had 13 points for the Lakers. LeBron James, in typical LeBron James fashion, came up huge for the Lakers. 30 points, shot 9 of 12 from the floor overall. 4-4 four, four from three-point range, eight assists. So, as I watched this game last night between the New Orleans Pelicans and L.A. Lakers, my thought immediately in the third quarter as I watched the Lakers pull away from the Pelicans, and, you know, obviously at the end of the first quarter, you look at the score, right? Pelicans up 30-29. to 29. But and I'm thinking, okay, we 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 gonna have a great great matchup between the Pelicans and the Lakers, and we're gonna get a chance to see if this Pelicans basketball team has grown and developed into being possibly a contender in the Western Conference. Because I look at these in in season tournament games as opportunities for young basketball teams, like the L.A. Lakers. The Boston Celtics, the Denver Nuggets, even the Phoenix Suns, they don't necessarily need these tournament games to develop chemistry or, you know, figure out if they can win big games or not. I think the in-season tournament is perfect for young basketball teams who are trying to develop chemistry and learn how to win. Teams like the New Orleans Pelicans and the – Indiana Pacers. So I'm watching the Pelicans-Lakers game last night. After the first quarter, Pelicans lead the Lakers 30-29. to And I'm like, okay, maybe the Pelicans have grown and they're ready to prove to us that they can contend with the Denver Nuggets of the world, the L.A. Lakers of the world, the Phoenix Suns of the world. And I look at the second and the third quarter, the L.A. Lakers dominated the New Orleans Pelicans. In the second quarter, the Lakers outscored the Pelicans 38 to 24. In the third quarter, the Pelicans got outscored by the Lakers 43 to 17. And so I was sitting there thinking, not only did the New Orleans Pelicans lose this game to the LA Lakers, they flat out quit. And the best player on the New Orleans Pelicans is Zion Williamson. Even though Brandon Ingram is more consistent than Zion Williamson is, Zion Williamson, when he's at his best, he's the best player on this Pelicans basketball team. And so for the New Orleans Pelicans to quit on national TV in an in-season tournament game that everyone is watching, to me, it shows me that Zion Williamson doesn't care and it also tells me that zion williamson does not want to be in new orleans this has been a a a, a quiet rumor that folks in new orleans have not wanted to talk about but zion williamson doesn't want to be in new orleans zion williamson wants to be in a bigger basketball market like the la lakers like the New York Knicks. He doesn't want to be in New Orleans. But that doesn't give him a pass to quit. And he flat out quit last night. I mean, he didn't show up at all after the first quarter last night. 13 points. Now, he did shoot 6 of 8 from the floor. But 
He just wasn't engaged into the game after the first quarter. Like, he just did not care what was going on. It's like this Pelicans basketball team, it's like they had went out the night before, and I know they're in Vegas, so I, <laughs> let me be very, very clear. You can get easily distracted being in Vegas. Make no mistake about it, especially being young in Vegas. It is understandable if young athletes get distracted in Vegas. That's why I always say if I'm an athlete and I'm a star, especially a star, if I'm in the NBA, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to. I, I, I want to play in those markets that are not as big as a New York or a L.A. or a Miami. I'll play in Milwaukee like, like Giannis plays in Milwaukee. I'll play in Milwaukee because it's easier to focus. But it, it looked like the Pelicans had went out the night before in Vegas and they were hung over. Seriously, they were hung over. I, I don't know what the hell was was going on, but they just were off last night. It was a it was a pathetic performance by the New Orleans Pelicans basketball team. And Zion Williamson to me, considering he's the best player, he deserves some of that blame for the Pelicans quitting because they flat out quit last night against the Lakers. Brandon Ingham, he also deserves some of this blame because he's the second best well him and McCullum are kind of even even to me. McCullum and, and Ingham are even players. But um, it was it was a, a very, very bad performance from the Pelicans. But even though I'm disappointed in Zion Williamson, this game also made me appreciate the greatness of LeBron James, folks. Because what LeBron is doing right now is something that we have not ever seen before. We, we've never seen a player... At LeBron's age, at 38 years of age, be able to do what he is doing. LeBron James is playing some great basketball. You look at LeBron James so far this year. These are the categories that LeBron James is ranked first in. He's ranked first in points per game. He's averaging 26 points per game. He's ranked first in rebounds per game with eight rebounds per game. He's ranked first in assists per game with Eight assists per game. He's ranked first in field goal percentage. He's shooting 57% from the floor. And he's ranked first right now in three-point field goal percentage. Yes, it's LeBron James, not Steph Curry. He's shooting 57% from three so far this year. LeBron James is playing some great basketball. And right now, LeBron James is the current NBA MVP, and we have to appreciate what LeBron is doing because we are going to miss LeBron when he's gone. We're going to miss LeBron when he's gone. We really, we really are. And this is someone who's not a LeBron fan. Like, I really appreciate LeBron as he's gotten older in his career. And because LeBron, what he does is he shows up every night. Every night he understands he's the marquee, and he understands – that I have to perform at a high level each and every night, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what the circumstances are, I have to perform at a high level. And it makes you appreciate LeBron when you look across the sidelines and look at Zion and Brandon Ingram not taking this tournament game serious. It makes you appreciate a LeBron James because even at age 38, LeBron James is still playing at a high level, and that motor is still running at a very, very, very high speed. So it makes you appreciate a LeBron James. It really does. Like, this matchup, watching this game, I, I, I got away from the X's and O's and the breakdown of the game. The Pelicans were down 40, for crying out loud. They were down 40. I got away from that. I just started thinking about the Pelicans leaving things to be desired as a basketball team, and it made me appreciate the greatness of a LeBron James.